Welcome to GeoVenture. Please like and subscribe. Our planet, a vibrant living world, often presents us with scenes of breathtaking beauty and serene tranquility. But beneath this delicate surface, immense and ancient forces are at work. These are the engines of creation, and at times of unimaginable destruction. We are, of course, speaking of volcanoes. For as long as life has existed, these geological wonders have shaped our world, building mountains, creating new land. They are a fundamental part of the Earth's natural cycle, a constant reminder of raw, untamable power. But there is another side to their story. Throughout human history, we have been drawn to their fertile slopes, building our homes and civilizations in their shadow, often forgetting the colossal power that sleeps beneath. Today, we journey back in time to witness moments when the Earth unleashed its full fury. Seven of history's deadliest eruptions, geological events and human stories. We begin our journey in 1815, on the island of Sumbawa in what is now Indonesia. Here, Mount Tambora, a seemingly quiet peak, was about to unleash a cataclysm of unprecedented scale. The eruption, registering a staggering seven on the volcanic explosivity index, was the largest in recorded history. It ejected colossal volumes of rock, ash, and gas into the atmosphere, profoundly altering the world's climate. The blast and pyroclastic flows devastated Sumbawa and neighboring islands. Entire villages vanished beneath meters of pumice and ash. Over 10,000 died in the first moments. The famine that followed claimed at least 60,000 more. Local kingdoms were annihilated, their cultures buried by debris. A sulfur dioxide veil circled the globe, dimming sunlight and cooling the climate. In 1816, the year without a summer, snow fell in June, frost struck in August, and harvest failed. A stark reminder, one event can ripple across the world. Tambora stands as history's deadliest eruption, a chilling lesson in planetary interconnectedness. 1883. In the Sunda Strait between Java and Sumatra, Krakatoa stirred. After months of rumbling, August 27 brought one of modern history's most violent events. The cataclysm was heard nearly 5,000 kilometers away in Mauritius, the loudest sound ever documented. 200 megatons, two-thirds of the island obliterated. The collapse displaced the sea, spawning tsunamis over 40 meters high. More than 160 towns and villages were swept away. 36,000 lives lost. Stratospheric aerosols painted surreal sunsets worldwide, immortalized in munches the scream. Floating pumice clogged sea lanes for years, a lasting reminder. It became one of the first globally reported disasters, revealing the tsunami peril of volcanic collapse. Anak Krakatau, the child, smolders where its parent fell, a living warning. Year 79, at the Bay of Naples, Pompeii prospered beneath Mount Vesuvius. Tremors were dismissed until the mountain erupted. A towering column sent ash and pumice raining down for hours. Roofs failed, daylight vanished, panic spread. At dawn, the column collapsed, superheated, hurricane speed flows engulfed the towns. Death was instantaneous. Heat, not ash, was the primary killer. Ash sealed the city, preserving homes, frescoes, even bread and ovens. Plaster casts captured final moments. Pompeii is both immense tragedy and unparalleled window into Roman life. After two months of quakes, steam, and a growing north flank bulge, Mount St. Helens erupted. A magnitude 5.1 quake triggered a colossal landslide, uncorking the magma system. Instead of rising vertically, a lateral blast tore outward at over 480 kilometers per hour. Forests fell like matchsticks. Snowmelt fed lahars that destroyed bridges and homes downstream. A 24-kilometer plume darkened day and circled the globe. 57 lives were lost, including volcanologist David Johnston, who radioed, Vancouver, this is it. Yet the eruption became a landmark study, 
revealing hazards of lateral blasts and how life returns. 1985, Columbia. Scientists mapped Lahar danger. Our marrow lay squarely in the path. A relatively small eruption melted glaciers. Water mixed with debris to form fast, concrete-like lahars. Warnings faltered amid weather, broken comms, and bureaucracy. Around 11 p.m., a 40-meter wall of mud swept through our marrow in minutes. Nearly 29,000 perished, a preventable tragedy that reshaped global volcano warning systems. From that mud came change, tighter monitoring, clearer alerts, and the imperative to act. For our final chapter, we travel to Sumatra, 74,000 years ago. Toba exploded in a super eruption, carving a caldera 100 by 30 kilometers, today filled by Lake Toba. It ejected nearly 3,000 cubic kilometers of material, blanketing South Asia in ash. Its signature appears in distant sediments and ice, evidence of global reach. A volcanic winter may have followed, cooling the planet dramatically and stressing ecosystems. Some propose a human population bottleneck, a debated link, but a sobering possibility. From Toba's chill to Armero's mud, these stories are etched into our memory. We have learned to read the mountain's whispers, to warn, to prepare. Yet we can never tame them. We listen, respect, and remember the echoes in the ash.